Okay, thank you. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here and talk about uh, our work on this high performance elliptical that we call for Q and uh, with an extra focus on uh, analysis of uh, the high perf uh, the analysis of this curve on high performance applications or applications uh, such as in IoT scenarios where you care about low power or low, low energy consumption. And, um, and following probably the vein that Michael Nerick mentioned, just to highlight how awesome ECC continue to be. And, um, and we will show a few reasons here in the presentation. So, but before uh, going to the main part of the presentation, let me give some context about our work. Uh, probably most of you are aware that there was a kind of competition to select uh, new elliptic curves. Uh, the ITF finally selected through the CFRG two, uh, new, uh, two elliptic curves uh, for a standardization, uh, Dan Bernstein curve uh, 25519 and, uh, and Mike Hamburg's uh, Goldilocks uh, curve. And uh, there is already an RFC uh, describing the curve, giving the generation details for the curve, and then focusing on um, cryptographic schemes, like in, in the case of the, the, this RF, RFC, I show here, uh, they um, show how to do DH uh, key exchange uh, for both curves. And then uh, ongoing work is focusing on, on, uh, on a signature scheme and uh, specifically they, have, they are targeting uh, EDDSA. Now, um, in the CFRG discussion, uh, uh, there was a focus on what are the kind of requirements that should be important at the moment of selecting the curve, and this is a, a quote that, I, that I, I've taken from the NIST ECC workshop. Uh, the real motivation for working in CFRG is the better performance and side channel resistance of new curves. Uh, developed by academic cryptographers over the last decade. So there, is a, a, there was a, a, a real emphasis in, in performance and side channel resistance at the moment of selecting these curves. And, and I, I can add other requirements that were important at the moment of the selection. Uh, I mentioned two that I uh, think are relevant, the rigidity in curve generation, and also the support for existing cryptographic algorithms such as ECDH, uh, the femoral case especially, and signature schemes. So, given this context, uh, with this, with this uh, uh, motivation in mind, uh, with Greg Costello, we kind of sit down and said, okay, how, how fast we can go with ECC, how, uh, uh, how we can design a curve that is really very efficient at the same time is, is secure. And so we began to put together the best of ECC at the moment, and we call what we came up with uh, for q And that really takes the best out of uh, the literature. Uh, it combines uh, two optimal, uh, in an optimal way, two endomorphisms. Um, this has been work that began, began with uh, the a, a seminal work by uh, Gallen, Lambert, and Vanson, and continue until very recently by uh, Ben Smith, uh, Gilevic and uh, Yonika very recently. Uh, we also combine the use of Edward, the Edwards form with the efficient Edwards coordinates, and finally uh, using the very compact Mersin prime uh, two to the one twenty seven minus one. Now, uh, after assessing and, and, and implementing and assessing the, 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 the security and, and performance of the curve, we actually observed that we uh, this this curve really uh, supported side channel secure, secure implementations as we wanted, and also achieve top performance, another very important requirement. Uh, another very uh, uh, nice feature of this curve is the uniqueness. This is actually the only curve at the 100, or close to the 128 bit security level with the properties that are shown above. So this unique give a, a very special uh, rigidity, uh, let's say, uh, um, a characteristic to, to, this, to this curve. Now, let's focus for a moment on, on, on the performance side. Uh, what are we talking about here? It's, uh, we, we were analyzing on different kind of platforms uh, the performance that we could achieve with, uh, for Q. In this case, for example, I show 
uh, the speed in uh, thousands of cycles to compute the main, the standard operation in ECC that is called variable basis scalar multiplication. And I show for different computer classes here the numbers that we obtain, for example, at an Intel desktop class and a smartphone class, uh, such as an ARM Cortex A15 processor and a, a microcontroller cl class like a Cortex M4. Uh, a microcontroller. And you can see, uh, compared with CUR 2519, we observe a significant speed ratio well above 2x and even close to 3x in some cases. Um, so when we, uh, for, from some certain perspective, we can think of uh, 4Q as the roadrunner of elliptic curves or something like that. So, um, so this is in terms of performance, and we were analyzing uh, how uh, the performance look in, in, in very different uh, platforms. And so the, the next step was, well, let's look at uh, the CFRG was doing, and they obviously focus on trying to make the, uh, the course work on uh, basic uh, cryptographic schemes, specifically ECDH and signature schemes. And I'll focus in the, uh, at some point of, in the presentation on those. Uh, first of all, let me first give you some basics about 4Q, what it is, what it is specifically. Um, uh, and, in, and this is a curve that is defined, by the way, on an, a quadratic extension field, where, uh, of, where the, lar the, the, the characteristic is, is, is a large prime, where P is the Mersenne prime that I mentioned at the beginning. We have these specific parameters, and the most um, a, efficient uh, representation of this curve is in the twisted edge form, with, which is shown here. Um, the cardinality of, of the group uh, uh, of the group of points on this curve, it's actually 392 times a very large number, in this case, a 246-bit prime. And uh, so you can see that there is a cofactor that is, let's say, relatively large, and we have to deal with it. Um, other important facts, uh, it supports uh, the fastest addition loss in elliptic curves that are also complete. That means they, are, uh, they allow very secure side-channel secure implementations. And importantly, it comes equipped with two endomorphisms. And uh, just to give you a rough idea, an endomorphism can be thought as a, as a shortcut uh, when you compute the scalar multiplication uh, that maps a point on the curve to other point, let's uh, let's say in, an, in 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 the middle or, or a quarter of the of the of the whole computation of a scalar multiplication. So it's like a shortcut to to, to obtain uh, values uh, on and on the curve and save a, a, a number of uh, point operations. So this uh, curve has optimally two endomorphisms, and so what you can do with it is basically uh, transform your original classical scalar multiplication, in this case expressed uh, as m times p, to a multi-scalar multiplication with these mini scalars a sub 1 to a sub 4. Now, we describe in the main paper that we uh, 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 published in Asia Crypt 2015, a decomposition method. It's, it's optimal in the sense that uh, you can input any any scalar m that has 256 bits, and you decompose in exactly four mini scalar a, a sub i with a maximum size of 64 bit each. So something like, like the following. Let's suppose we have a scalar m, and then with the, the decomposition method, you can obtain these four uh, mini scalars, um, uh, which are 64 bits maximum. Now, each of the mini scalars will be um, attached to a, a, either to, a debate, to the base point or to a, a value using the, uh, endomor uh, the endomorphisms, mapped by using the endomorphisms. So let's take a look at how the scalar multiplication works in this case. Uh, before proceeding, because we want to do it efficiently and in a side channel resistant way, we have to recode the mini scalars. So these are the values taken in binary form from the, from the previous mini scalars, and we perform two steps to convert them to the representation, the sign representation below. 
And if you notice, every column now uh, is, is non-zero uh, because the top, the top row, all of them, all the values available here are now digits that are either one or minus one. So if you look at them from the a column perspective, you can uh, construct these, these values, digits that are from one to eight, and accompanied by, by the sign in each case. And the sign is determined by the, by the digits on the, on the top row that is the, the, the first mini scalar. Now, using this representation after decomposing and recoding, you can proceed with the scalar multiplication. What you have to do first is construct a table and uh, with eight values, combining all the, possible, uh, all the possible values of the base point plus the uh, mappings of the, using the endomorphisms the math values using the endomorphisms. And each entry will correspond to, so each digit will point to an entry in the, in the table. So if you do the computation from left to right, uh, first of all, you take the, the entry six and load it, and then you proceed to perform exactly 64 doublings addition operations or subtractions, depending on the sign, of course. Uh, each time doubling, and performing a doubling, uh, an addition or subtraction with one value from the table. And the entry is indicated by the digit, of course. This is exactly 64 times, done 64 four times. That means it's a very regular execution uh, a, a containing exactly 64 doublings, 64 additions, and that facilitates protection against uh, timing and, and simple side channel attacks. And also, the table only contains eight points. Naively, it would contain 16. After recoding, we can make it more efficient, only six, eight points in this case. Okay, so these are, let's say, the, the, uh, a very quick uh, overview about the, 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 the kind of computation that we need for uh, the high-speed version of the square multiplication using 4Q. And now, what about doing some basic stuff uh, in the cryptographic sense? Uh, we uh, recently wrote a, a, a uh, an internet draft with, uh, in collaboration with Watson Ladd and uh, Richard, Bar Richard Barn, and uh, it's available in this link. That, uh, the title of the draft is Curve for, for Q. Uh, the current version describes uh, the compressed version of the cofactor ECDH, meaning that the public's, public keys are compressed and they are 32 bytes in total in size. Uh, inside the document, we describe two implementations of scalar multiplication. The one that I described the high-speed version using endomorphisms, but also we describe a naive version without endomorphisms uh, that could be fit, uh, suitable for a const memory constraint application, for example. Now, let's look at very roughly, uh, this is uh, a very, the, the, the basic uh, cofactor ECDH, but, but for completeness, let me go through it very quickly. But, uh, uh, in the case of uh, this, this scheme, you have Alex and Bob that wants to communicate. They um, a, a establish some, some, some secrets A and B and, and compute the scalar multiplication with a generator, and then they proceed to, to compress the values. That means that if you have a point on the curve that contains an X, Y coordinate, the compressed form is basically the Y coordinate by a, a plus a, a sine bit that is derived from the, from the X coordinate. You pass the value, you have to decompress it, you have to perform a validation to make sure that the value is on the curve. Now here is the cofactor part, you have to compute uh, a 392 times uh, the validated value. And this value is, this computation is actually, consists of actually eight doublings and two additions. And then we, the final computation to get to the supposedly shared secret. Uh, on the other side you perform uh, roughly the same operations, um, and hopefully you get to the same share uh, uh, value. Now, as I said, the, the, uh, these are compressed public keys of 32 bytes long, uh, and, uh, and so that, 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 that's similar, for example, of uh, CURE 255.9. But you can also uh, proceed with an uncompressed uh, version where you use 64 bytes, and it's slightly faster and more power efficient, so it could be more suitable for, for certain applications. Um, it's just a straightforward impl uh, implementation of cofactor ECDH without the compression part. Now, the next uh, 
part is that we wanted to uh, to do something about signatures, so we look at the uh, uh, we 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 came up with a specification of a high speed high security uh, signature scheme, and we call it the Schnorr queue, which is basically uh, a Schnorr type signature scheme closely following the EDDSA specification, but in this case using four queues. So we apply some uh, some changes in in some some cases. Um, as in the case of EDDSA, we have two versions. So one using pre-hashing, uh, which is uh, efficient to support single pass interface for signing. Uh, in, during signing, you have to uh, uh, load the, the, the message twice, at least, and uh, that could be inefficient if the message, for example, is too long. So uh, if you apply pre-hashing, that, that could make things more efficient in certain, in certain scenarios. Uh, also, the the, the version without prehashing, and in this case, there, uh, we have the, the resilience against hash function collisions, of course, uh, 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 for, the, for the version without prehashing. Um, now, this is a Schnorr type signature scheme, so you have a deterministic generation. You, you don't need uh, a, a, a randomness per signature, as, for example, is the case of ECDSA. Um, and in, as in the case of EDDSA, uh, we have a small signatures, 64 bytes in size, in size, and a small public keys, 32 bytes in size. But the, the relevant feature here is that we have, uh, at least to my knowledge, a very efficient, probably the fastest core-based signature scheme at the 128-bit uh, security level. And to show you the kind of performance that we achieve, uh, for example, these are numbers for an Intel Haswell processor. Signing takes uh, 39,000 cycles compared against 61,000 cycles achieved by ET25519. Uh, verification is, is even much faster, 64,000 cycles compared to uh, 185,000 cycles for ED25519. So very high speed, uh, which can, can be suitable for, for high performance applications. Um, and here is the link with the specifications for those are you, uh, of you that are curious about the, the complete details for the specification of a SNAR queue. Now, we are putting together these uh, schemes and uh, we implemented them and now we are preparing the release of uh, version 3.0 of our library. Uh, the library that we wrote is called 4 uh, the, the, the The current version is 2.0 but we are releasing very soon uh, version 3.0 including uh, cofactor ECDH and the Schnorr Q digital signatures as I described them. Uh, 4QLib already Im includes a bunch of implementations, uh, but the, the version 3.0 will include many more. And for example, we have a portable C implementation, a Nexus 64 optimized implementation, uh, optimized implementation for 32 bit platforms, optimized implementation for ARM using Neon, uh, and also for some 32 bit ARM microcontrollers. Um, uh, such as Cortex M M4, and uh, all of the crypto operations in in the library are protected against timing attacks, cache attacks, exception attacks, invalid curve attacks, and small group attacks. Um, now, for the next slide, let me focus on the on the on these uh, uh, on these uh, uh, implementations. Uh, uh, we have been doing some work on. Uh, small devices, embedded devices, such as uh, a bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit microcontrollers, uh, trying to um, uh, assess what kind of um, performance and, 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 and uh, memory and, and energy constraints you can achieve with, with uh, 4Q. So, and this is uh, joint work, by the way, with Zellu, uh, Giovandro Pereira, and Wajon Zio. Uh, we basically ported and specialized the library to various uh, microcontrollers. Um, here to show you a very quick summary of the kind of performance that we are achieving. This is, these are preliminary results. Uh, I'm showing for an A-bit AVR at mega microcontroller and also for a, a Cortex-M4. You can see comparing against Core 2519, uh, significant again, a significant speed up uh, in comparison with that with, with that uh, uh, curve. Um, and uh, I think we can still go farther in the case of AVR. Uh, I think this is still a, a, a lower bound. Um, 
So now let's focus on the AVR implementation. We want to assess how, how much efficient also in terms, not only in terms of performance, but also in terms of energy consumption, with, which can be relevant for IoT applications that care a lot about uh, latency, let's say, or a latency response, but also energy consumption. And here I have preliminary, preliminary results showing the computation in seconds, for example, for AB, AVR microcontrollers, uh, for crypto operations. So I'm showing here for ECDH and also for uh, signatures. Uh, comparing uh, here, the numbers are for NIST P256, which is shown in green, uh, CUR2509, and ED25519 for um, in gray, and for Q, Schnorr Q in, in blue. And you can see in each case, we achieve a, a much better performance. These are in terms of second, uh, 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 in terms of seconds on, on this a, a bit AVR microcontroller. Um, a, these are more details about the implementation that are compared. Um, a, basically, uh, one thing that I want to point out is that, for example, you can see here a very, very huge speed up in, in the case of key generation. That's, that's because uh, the state of the art implementation so of these other curves don't contain, uh, don't support fixed base scalar multiplication. So that, that shows how much improvement you can get if you exploit free computed tables, as we do. Um, and, uh, and in general, this, this also shows how uh, 4Q is the only option that computes most of the stuff in less than one second. And that kind of latency can be important in some applications. Uh, uh, so uh, as you can see only here in verification is slightly above, but all other cases is, is below one second that can be uh, a, an important factor um, in certain applications. Now let's look at uh, more closely to the case of ECDH, static ECDH and ephemeral ECDH. Um, again, NISP256 results in green, CUR2519 in gray, and 4Q, uh, in, in blue. Uh, by the way, the C means compressed public keys and the U is the uncompressed version that I described in previous slides. Again, you can see the, uh, the performance difference. These are a, a, a estimated energy consumption in millijoules for on the AVR. And uh, this analysis corresponds to a wireless sensor node that a popular wireless sensor node that is called Mika Z. Um, at 7.37 megahertz. So again, you can see the, the significant improvement uh, in, in terms of uh, energy, uh, sig significantly notorious in ephemeral ECDH, and that again, it's because most implementation of, let's say, CUR2519 don't exploit free computations uh, for ECDH. So uh, for truly ephemeral computations, our library performs much better. And that could be important for, for us again, uh, for low energy uh, applications. Now, uh, our implementation, as I'm showing, uh, it prior, prioritizer, prior, prioritizes speed and also a low power consumption. Uh, a, so there is a trade-off, uh, of course. Uh, we have higher memory consumption. And this is shown in the, as an example here. Our variable basis scalar multiplication requires almost twice the memory size for code uh, compared with the CUR2519 implementation. Uh, so depending on the application, you can, you can balance uh, or decide on what is best. Uh, in, the case of a, in the case that speed latency is important uh, or low energy is, is more important, then uh, 4Q give, gives an edge, a very important edge. Um, uh, uh, but, uh, but you have to balance depending on, on the application. On the other hand, um, uh, 4Q is a very rich, uh, it contains very rich arithmetic. Uh, so really, if your project, it's, for your project is more important memory consumption, then you can even implement 4Q using a Montgomery ladder as, as core to 5519 and, and have a very constrained implementation and still be faster and more power efficient. So that's another advantage of 4Q, uh, the kind of flexibility that you can get uh, out of it. Now, 
let me uh, finish this presentation by uh, showing uh, our work in progress. We are working on plugging in 4Q into OpenSSL, and this is joint work with Bob Bramley and, and Nicola uh, Tuberi. Uh, we have been working on this integration, uh, working with the, the, the current version of 4Q lib. Actually, that integration is complete, version 2.0 works with version 1.1.0 of OpenSSL. So there is a wide support of any ECC protocol that is out there can right away use uh, 4Q, uh, and we will be releasing um, a, a, the patch uh, for OpenSSL uh, soon. Now, one downside of, of that approach of supporting all the protocols available is that we, can, we have to use some of the slow parts of OpenSSL, and in particular, it hurts to use some of the multi-precision operations, as I will show in the, in the last two slides. Now, we have more work in progress to address these uh, performance issues, because we plan to have an additional uh, option uh, using an external engine to, pro uh, to provide 4Q that should solve most of the performance degradation issues. And also we are uh, integrating a SnorQ uh, for, uh, for signatures. Let me show you the preliminary results uh, in OpenSSL, uh, in this case on a 64-bit Intel Skylake processor, to show the kind of performance that we uh, achieve when we compare against NIST P256, uh, and CUR2519 against the 4Q implementation. Uh, here we show the cases of static ECDH and also ECDSA, uh, not for the case, ECDSA not for the case of CUR2519. Uh, as far as I know, uh, this curve uh, is, hasn't been uh, plugged into ECDSA, so I cannot show uh, numbers for that. In any case, uh, you can see uh, when you compare uh, uh, the performance of, of 4Q uh, against uh, the numbers of the other two curves, there is a significant improvement in the operations per second that are here, uh, especially here the green value that corresponds to ECDH. There is also a significant speed up in the case of ECDSA verification. And now, we don't observe that much of a speed up in the case of signing, and that is related to the OpenSSL uh, performance issues. And that will be obvious in the next implementation. Now, I have a comment here. Uh, the, at least the, 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 the implementation that we tested of CURT2519 in OpenSSL uh, was kind of slow. Uh, Nicola Tuveri actually plugged in a, a new engine for that curve uh, based on Donna C64, and that performed much better. Now, here is the breakout of, of the uh, timings uh, on the same Skylake processor. Now focus on P256 and 4Q for ECDSA and ECDH. Uh, and uh, here is to show what are the kind of operations that are causing performance issues. And as you can see, the, the numbers in blue that corresponds to the scalar multiplication pretty much makes sense. In every case, you see that 4Q is much, much faster as, 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 as it should be. But you can see these, these blocks in pink and orange, they are pretty expensive. And those correspond to actually to uh, modular inversions. And modular inversions shouldn't be that expensive, but in OpenSSL they are. So when we use their functions, we really get a hit here. And uh, so that's one of the issues that we are solving with uh, using the external engine and, uh, and using our own fu functions. Uh, so we, should, we will see pretty soon uh, you know, most of the cost overhead in 4Q going away and, and getting a much better ratio in, in the improvement. So with this, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. Um, if anybody's interested in getting more additional information about our project uh, related to 4Q, uh, there is uh, the paper out there, uh, the link to the library, uh, the RFC draft, uh, there is a reference implementation in Python that comes uh, this, uh, together with the RFC draft, uh, posted in GitHub, uh, Schnorr Q, and so on, uh, and all the uh, stuff that is coming soon uh, and, uh, and will be released. Um, if you want to uh, be participant of this project, uh, you can do a lot of stuff. There are a bunch of stuff that can be done. Uh, so talk to us, send us an email, and uh, and, and that's all that I wanted to say. Thank you.
Thanks for your talk. So early on, you uh, showed the, the trick with the endomorphisms, and you had that table of eight uh, pre-computed points. Mm -hmm. So how did you protect that table of eight against the cache timings? Yeah, so as seen all other ECC implementations, when you have multiple points that you have to access, you have to do it in a constant way. So basically you go, you do a linear path through all the points and use logical operations to access each point and take the, the, the one that you want. Interesting. So is that actually faster than, because the, the eight points there are just sums of three different points together. Yeah. So is that actually faster than going through it is? And, yeah, and it is. It is now, much okay. faster. Great. Yeah. Um, you uh, mentioned uh, that you have a faster engine for modular inversion for OpenSSL. Uh, why not just contribute it and not use the engine? Users don't really like using engines in OpenSSL. It's a pain. Uh, is it possible to get that integrated? Uh, uh, well, I'm not the best to answer that question. I, I, I don't know. Uh, are you going to make so it available? Ah, so, ah, so the question is, yeah, we are going to make it available. So we are uh, probably that wasn't, we, I passed too fast on that, but uh, the release is coming soon for the patches to open SSL. So the idea is to publicly, openly. Uh, um, All right, but yeah. pull requests welcome if you have a faster modular inversion. Uh, okay. We're on GitHub. Yeah. Okay. Great. You provide some nice speedup uh, as opposed to Curve to 5519. Uh, ben Smith provided some nice speedup with uh, the commercial face. Any comparison to this uh, hyperacademic curve? Yeah. So if you uh, go to the to the to the papers, you will see comparison with other uh, curves available, inclu including Genus 2 uh, stuff like the Kummer. And uh, in every case, uh, except with a few exceptions, we see still a significant speed up in, in, in comparison with the Coomer. Uh, but Coomer is also uh, an efficient alternative, yeah. Uh, could I just ask about patents? I, I, I know the GLV method was, it, it was patented, is patented, I'm not sure of my facts, but perhaps mm -hmm. you could say, is there any uh, patent issues that arise? I cannot comment on patents, uh, 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 so the, the only thing that I, I can say, from our side, all our software is released under MIT license, open source, uh, completely, so we are not applying, not planning to apply, we haven't applied for any patents on, on all the work that you see. If there are companies with patents, I cannot comment on that. Uh, what I will say is that uh, a, a, our library a, supports both kind of implementations, exploiting endomorphisms and without endomorphisms. And if there are any kind of concern, you still can use the, the case without endomorphisms, get a nice speed up, uh, a, and that's a, an alternative that we also provide. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's take, thank Patrick again.